Yo, it's Drazy. This is the second squat session. This is what we're going to be doing on Wednesdays for the foreseeable future. Got uh, Shea Boy with me this time. So these split squats, like to keep these in for the warm-ups and do them every chance I can get. Uh, really work the uh, knees in a diagonal range of motion, which normal squats generally go up and down. So this is a great way to work that like deceleration strength, which is critical in actual sports. Um, so you don't injure your knees, but, uh, yeah, just a great way to warm up and also works the hip flexors. This is so awesome. Charles Poliquin and, uh, um, you know, Ben Patrick, all these types of the knees over toes guy. Great, great information. Love, love this movement. I'm getting better and better at it. And, uh, I'll probably work up to, you know, hundred to 150 pounds in this exercise and just kind of maintain my strength there. But. Uh, you can kind of see the difference here. You see Shea um, probably represents most uh, average athletes. Um, you know, they're, he's real strong. He's got good kinesthetic awareness, but he's not super flexible. Uh, he's not inflexible, but you can see just a short period of time training this. I've already increased my flexibility so much. And, uh, you know, and of course, strengthening the knees too, which is great. But uh, yeah, this is a great movement. Highly recommend keeping it in there. We also like to um, uh, get our ankles mobilized and put weights on our knees in a deep squat position. So all sorts of good stuff there. But uh, anything else that we feel like we need, if we get some wild hair up our ass, like, you know, we could even do back raises. There's basically sky's the limit for these warm-ups. Some days... Might be short on time, might even, I know it's a cardinal sin. So deep into the squats, um, I'm going super, super insanely light here because um, I'm just starting a, a new cycle, but it's a really good opportunity to practice these little pauses, some bounces, just doing a whole bunch of, you know, variety and anything that comes to mind uh, this week. So this is from last week. This week I did uh, zombie squats. I just used the kids way use 155 again. Um, you know, just trying to get some good angles. Um, I'm filming a lot of these, almost every set that I'm doing anyways, just to kind of, you know, see what it looks like, make sure that I'm getting that nice vertical bar path, keeping all the tension on the quads. But, you know, these squats, again, they're feeling super light, so it's nice to, to have something that's light like that. If I can do a little pause and I can work on the speed and just get a feel for that perfect bar path movement.
weekend, we did these deadlifts, a couple of warm-up sets. Shay ended up using 185 pounds for his working sets. And just to cut down on time, we stuck it out with the six sets. We can, we can take these all the way up to 10. It just depends on time and recovery, all that kind of stuff. Um, again, very light. I'm sticking with 225. And uh, actually, I decided that I was going to teach Shay the um, clean pull this week. So this is from last week. We just did deadlifts. But he picked up the clean pull. I had him do 135 pounds this week. In a separate video, I'm going to do a little demonstration differences between the deadlift and the clean pull. Um, clean pull is used primarily in Olympic weightlifting as an accessory movement. They don't really do much deadlifting. The deadlifting they generally do is um, um, some sort of variation. You can't use quite as heavy of a weight because they don't compete in that in Olympic weightlifting. But um, I really like all of the extras that uh, come along with Olympic weightlifting. Tends to be... Um, tends to be a little bit more useful, in my opinion, than for, for like everyday sort of activities, an everyday type of strength. But in any case, I mean, deadlift is a fine exercise. I love it. It's probably my favorite exercise, actually. But, um, you know, it, it's just kind of like the next thing. It's another thing to teach Shay. It's another thing for me to work on because I'm not that great at him yet either. But, uh, you know, this week I worked at the same weight, 225, and I was doing clean pulls. But, um, yeah, just getting a couple of different angles in here. And, you know, I'm trying to use my quads more with, with everything, basically. So I've always been posterior chain dominant. So now I'm getting used, to, uh, getting used to using the quads more for some of this Olympic lifting variations. And then I finished things up with um, 10 sets of 10. I didn't take video of all 10 sets, just one one set. But 10 sets of 10 with the Tib Rays. I got a little Tib Rays machine, which is great. Used 20 pounds on there, felt pretty light. And then uh, 200 pounds on the little homemade calf raise machine that I made, and I did 10 sets of 10 on there. Pretty good. I was actually not as sore as I thought I would be, so I think I'm going to have to up the weights quite a bit, honestly. But... Um, yeah, nice, nice little extra volume. I'm not really specializing in calves right now. I actually want to get my, my flexibility more than I want to build the strength of my tendons and my lower legs and knees, although that is extremely important. So I'll throw this stuff in every once in a while, but I'm not going to do it religiously. I'm going to do um, stretches, about 30 minutes worth of stretching, really intense PNF stretching after every session, but 
this is just kind of rounds everything out. So hope it gave you guys some ideas and, uh, you know, any criticisms are welcome, whether they're uh, friendly or not. So have a good one, guys.